construction, golf news, equipment, travel, interviews, course profiles, and more. Your weekly fix of all things golf is about to begin. It's the Flagstick Podcast with your hosts, Jeff Bonner and Scott McLeod. Well, here we go with another episode of the Flagstick Podcast, sponsored this week by Adidas. Adidas introduces the Ultimate 365 Tour Heat Apparel and ZG23 Vent Footwear to help golfers handle the heat this season. The collection features a mix of silhouettes for men and women with heat-ready and no-show technology to keep golfers cool and dry so they can perform their best. Both the ZG3 Vent and Ultimate 365 Tour Apparel are available now on adidas.ca, the Adidas app, and selected retails worldwide, so you're going to want to check that out. Definitely. Thanks, Adidas, for jumping on as our uh, sponsor for the next uh, bunch of weeks. Yeah, great. So you're going to hear great. that little script of uh, yeah. knowledge uh, a few times. Some great um, product there. Uh, before we get going here, as always, I want to just make sure that uh, you're following us across all social media networks, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok, subscribing on Spotify, Audible, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. And as always, we really do encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us, and click the notification bell to make sure that you never miss a single episode. Um, the last bunch of episodes, we had our uh, little contest there, and we're going to do the draw following this show. All right, and uh, then we'll announce the winners. Uh, we'll let the winners know, and then we'll announce them on the next episode of the Flagstick Podcast. Sounds good. Um, okay, Scotty Mac. Quick it's mention: been a busy... another yes. addition to the social media networks. We're actually on Threads as well now. Threads. For, so if people are looking for that uh, Twitter alternative. Uh, we are available there. Obviously, we're not as active as we are on Twitter, but yeah, just another another outlet for us. Yeah, and, and for those people, just uh, I know we have we have a lot of action on flagstick.com these days. Um, yes, busy, busy. A lot of action. It has it been intersectional uh, time, so mm -hmm. that generally does uh, create an awful lot of traffic. Um, <laughs> and for those visiting flagstick.com, you will notice that uh, um, our Twitter feed is kind of like the... Well, the API, wonky, obviously, so. right now, Twitter's been doing a bunch of different things. So, uh, yeah, we'll... Uh, the site's just... not broken. Let's no, just, no, no. Just, just people can just go directly to our, our our Twitter account at Flagstick if you're looking for uh, tweets there. Hopefully, uh, hopefully at some point soon, Twitter modifies that API and allows that uh, access again soon. But uh, yeah, whatever. Come on, musky <laughs> boy, let's go. Yeah, let's get exactly that Twitter fixed. It, so yeah, yeah, not, it the has been of, busy. not the end of the world though. Not the no, end no, of the no. world. No, no, no. It certainly has been busy uh, on the website for sure. I mean, uh, you know, we'll get to it here a little bit as we get to the front nine. But, uh, you know, obviously uh, we had our shootout. And then right after that, the intersectionals were going on that same mm -hmm. day. Uh, and we were pounding up the results. And thank you in advance to everybody that was helping get results and stuff to us or whatever. But uh, created a very late night on Sunday <laughs> night. But uh, well worth it because obviously people were searching for, for stuff. And uh, we were able to deliver what they wanted to see on flagstick.com. And we did have a pretty busy uh, busy past weekend. Um, and uh, I think we uh, we probably want to get into that topic sooner yeah. rather than later. So for sure. um, let's not hold off. Let's, Let's get not. to the front nine. Uh, front nine presented by Metcalf Golf Club, a natural setting, a pleasant challenge. Uh, golf season, in case you haven't noticed it, is here. Um, don't wait. If you haven't done it already, don't wait. Save now. Buy a membership if you can get one. Uh, join a league uh, or purchase some game packs. Those game packs are gold. Uh, and be ready to hit the first tee. Visit MetcalfGolf.com to shop now. Okay. Uh, topic number one. Yeah, what do we got? Nine. What do we got going on the show this week, Jeffrey? Well, let's. Uh, um, first of all, let's say uh, we do have a great show, uh, and we are here in the front nine. Uh, we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to we're to hit the lesson tee, obviously, with yeah, Kevin and Jake sure. Kane. We always love doing that. Uh, we're going to get into some catching up on a few things, uh, some news and events that have gone on, particularly one of our own. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's a shameless plug, but it's a great tournament. <laughs> that's, a, um, that's okay. And on the back nine, we're going to talk open. Yeah, uh, it's open week, open championship, oh, yeah. British open for those of you that are living in the dark ages and don't Dude, realize that it's not called open, that anymore. The it's open. the open championship. Okay, you got it. So since 1860. We're going to get into that on the back nine a little bit because there's always some good discussion that goes around on surrounding majors. Uh, but uh, first topic I want to get into is I want to talk about the flagstick shootout. Yeah. How'd it go? 
<laughs> Freaking, you're an idiot. You were there. Oh, wait, um, yeah, the flag right, stick but... shooter uh, is um, it, it, it's a, there's a lot of history there, and yeah. there's a gap in the history, or there was mm-hmm. a gap in the history because there now was. that that uh, history has has begun to retell um, a new story. Yeah, there'll be new history, uh, but we did have the the inaugural rebirth. <laughs> Of the uh, flagstick shootout at Smugglers Glen this past weekend. Yeah, um, thanks to Cobra and Puma for helping sponsor that, and Ganchev as well. Yes, big time, big time. Sponsors are super important. Uh, the last time we had the flagstick shootout at Smugglers Glen was 2016, mm-hmm. um, and uh, back then we had started to turn the event more into call it an elite field. Uh, I guess yeah, better, we can call it better that. Players. Limited, a limited field, no yeah. flights, no indexes just just a free-for-all and yeah. um and a shootout basically that's mm-hmm. called it that it's like a shootout at the okay corral except it's a shootout at smugglers Glen corral um and the whole idea is to bring some of the the best players that we can find out into a limited player field event and just let them beat each other to death on a really good golf course <laughs> yeah um now the weekend went off great. Uh, no, we did not get the size of field that we wanted for the first the new, we, the first new rendition. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, every event that we've ever done has always started like this. It's yeah. always been a little bit of a growth period. You know, the first year was a little lower. Then the second year started to pick mm-hmm. up. And the third, by the time we get to the third, fourth, and fifth years, we're starting to turn people away. We're starting to beat them off with golf clubs. Um, and I suspect that that's what's going to happen here with the flagstick shooter mm-hmm. as well. We've got great support and sponsorship. We've got a fantastic golf course to host it at. Our yeah. hosts, the Seal family there at the Glen House Resort and Smugglers Glen, awesome, are just amazing hosts. And yep. uh, and Jason Boys, and you know who's the director of operations, yeah. obviously, you know, getting the course ready and everything. They just made it so smooth for everyone and heard nothing yeah. but great feedback from the players and and you know definitely in the last couple of days heard from a lot of people that said hey you know what it's on my calendar for next year uh you know they heard how it went uh there was people that were out there that i ran into in the last couple of days that i was asking about that uh you know great response so yeah it's uh it's got a great future out of it yeah now um we had uh really tough conditions on saturday and and not not tough conditions in the sense of it was windy and raining and and cold no, no. and yucky it was conditions were amazing as far as the weather goes it was it was sticky mm-hmm. uh, no question but we had the course that we set the course up we set the course up it's not All like you're walking course. out to smugglers glen and just playing the black teams. no no um no. we set it up we change things we choose the pin positions and um we set it up tough. Uh, yeah. We set it up long. We set it up tough. We set it up to uh, to give the players a real uh, test on day one, mm-hmm. knowing that we were going to soften yeah. the setup on day two and really open the door up for to see some drama, some come from behind kind of because we knew Create that this shootout. type of field, these players could put up a low number if we gave them a course they could put a low number on. So yeah. um, day one, you know, at the end of the day, Charles Powell, who's a um, local uh, member, yep. and uh, he put up a three under yep. uh, on on what we thought was really difficult go- golf course. Yeah, conditions. it was pretty really good play from Charles. I mean, Charles is a member at uh, not only Smugglers, but uh, Cataraqua and Rosedale as well. So yeah. he's used to playing high quality designs. And yeah, he definitely uh, that was a great number. And, and I think every other player had a lot of respect for that number that he put up that. Day. Absolutely. And it was only a few guys under par on day one, um, yeah. you know, which is indicative of, of the course setup. The greens are running quick. Uh, mm-hmm. pins were in good positions, but the course was playing long and tough and fast. And I think that's the, the big th- thing there is it was playing fast, mm-hmm. uh, greens and, and, uh, balls are running out, rolling out after pots. Yeah. And that makes for some four or five footers coming back. And that leads to some three putts. And, you know, the yeah. guys have to respect the speed of the greens day two. We got a little bit of rain on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Um, which kind of softened things up a little bit. And then we relaxed the tees a little bit on some holes, gave them a little bit of a opportunity carrot, dangling the carrots. Yeah. You yeah, know. yeah. Yeah. And they uh, responded. Yeah. And they did. And they put up some numbers on Saturday, which we yeah, expected. Eight, eight, 
eight players were under par on, on Sunday. And, and as we know, a couple of 67s in there, which was nice to see. Yeah, yeah, which led to sort of a, some come from behind uh, heroics. Um, mm -hmm. One particular, Hunter McGee, yeah. um, uh, son of Alan McGee, mm -hmm. a recent inductee into the OVJ Hall of Fame and uh, eight time, eight time, eight time city champion, mm -hmm. uh, city and district champion. Uh, he put up a really strong number on Saturday and climbed up into second place, which was phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Scott mm -hmm. had a winner. And yes, uh, we do um, happens to be very familiar to you. <laughs> Yeah, so I, let, let me that. let me let me defer let me yeah. defer the remainder of the story of the flagstick <laughs> shootout to you as as some of your very own students were uh, yeah. putting up some digits on Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, it was, it was fortunate. Uh, Connor Gadad ended up with the win. I did some work with Connor over the last few years. Um, I wouldn't say I work with him all the time or whatever. We did a little bit of work, um, but I actually ended up playing with his dad last night. Believe it or not. So, uh, what are the odds? <laughs> uh, great, great kid, student at uh, Laurier. Uh, member at uh, Cataraqui. Everybody loves Connor. Just, you know, certainly a humble young man, uh, quite talented. And uh, it was quite funny. If you go to the story on flagstick.com, he, uh, he, on Saturday night, he was sort of, you know, thinking about his game a little bit. And he just felt that maybe, you know, he didn't have the right strategy uh, on Saturday, even though he'd shot, you know, a couple under par. So he, uh, he watched all three of Tiger Woods's amateur victories on like this greeny video his dad was telling about it uh and he just said you know he he, he kind of realized that you know it was about not making as much mistakes you know he he knew you can only make so many birdies but the key was not to make mistakes which is really important around smugglers mm -hmm. uh, and that layout and then you know that was his goal on uh, sunday and that's what he managed to do he said even even you know the par 5 18th he hit three three iron off the tee and he said oh he might be taking some heat for it but you know it did what he needed to do and didn't get himself in trouble save the strokes that he needed to save and was enough to you know obviously create the minus seven uh finish the 67 in the final round and and, and the winning uh margin so uh you know smart play by him and uh yeah a great champion you know one that obviously he's played in a number of our tournaments before mm-hmm uh, so it's nice to see him have success and, uh, you know, he was, he was proud to, to raise that trophy and join a, a number of other great players that have won the shootout over the years. Yeah, no, it's awesome. And it was quite a battle for a very long time mm -hmm. between him yes. and Charles Powell. Yeah. Um, you know, right up until <clears throat> 12, Charles had a little hiccup yeah. on the 12th yeah. and then another, maybe another little hiccup on 18, but I think by that time, uh, by yeah. the time they got to 18, it was pretty much a, a done deal, but, um, what a great battle. I mean, it was a shootout. Yeah. That's exactly what we hope for out of this type of event. It's it's not that you don't want to have, I mean, any tournament organizer would want to have 120, 140 players out there playing, but mm -hmm. um yeah. it's it's far uh it's far better to have a smaller field of very strong players. Yeah. Um that are just like just grinding it out and battling it out with each other over a couple of days on a course like that. It's a Definitely. manageable tournament, um, creates a lot of drama. And, um, you know, the players were, like you said, they were very uh, um, complimentary of the course. Uh, and uh, the weekend, you know, we, we had a little bit of a hiccup uh, trying to deal with on Saturday with a, with a bit of a traffic accident on the 401. Oh, yeah. Kind of yeah, yeah. stressed us out a little <laughs> bit, but, you know, we had one casualty in that, unfortunately. And, um, and there's not much you can do about that. Not, not casualty in the sense that somebody was in the accident. Casualty is in somebody yeah. that, you know, I uh, wasn't able to make it uh, to the yeah. tournament because of yeah, it. Yeah, and in, in, in the end, I mean, relative to, you know, obviously, you know, a horrific accident happening, it wasn't... Yeah. It wasn't uh it wasn't a bad thing. I mean, it just no. you know, it's like anything. When you run a tournament, you expect to have some things go a little bit sideways, yeah. causes us to have to kind of juggle a little bit and and try to uh, you know, kind of accommodate for it. And you know, if you're in if you're in in the golf business and you're running events, yeah, you know what? It's like herding cats, and it's not always about the cats, it's always about <laughs> lots of other things that, that happen uh when you're going, but you know able to pull it off smoothly and kudos to you as the tournament director to uh to kind of make that happen and yeah i mean like i said lots of lots of great feedback lots of people interested lots of people asking about the event in the last uh, few days uh and i can only imagine it's it's just gonna keep growing more than anything that's our hope okay <clears throat> all right Scott. 
Yes, uh, OVJ Hall of Fame ceremonies are starting to, uh, you know, happen. Yeah. Starting to happen. Obviously, the who's getting into the OVJ Hall of Fame has already been announced three or yeah. four or five times over. But now the OVJ is getting into these individual induction ceremonies. Um, and last week, Alan McGee uh, had his induction ceremony, and and this week with the uh, Commissioners Ottawa Open on the PGA mm-hmm. Tour of Canada uh, happening, uh, Brad Fritch is going to have his induction ceremony um and you know then following that i think will be susan pearl susan and pearl, yeah and kevin and lisa haim have already, already had theirs there yeah. so uh okay. it's awesome i mean it's uh, i love the way the ovj is doing this um mm-hmm. rather than trying to gather everybody together for one big ceremony it's, it's very yeah. difficult to do um i know we you know you'd ideally love to do it that way but uh this puts the group uh dynamic very specific to that individual or that 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 couple in the case of Kevin and Lisa yep. and um and I think it's a little more uh personal um, yes exactly yeah. that's the word I was yeah. looking for a little more personal uh yeah. than just a room full of people that may or may not know that person right. you know they're yeah. getting inducted in so. yeah so Kevin and Lisa obviously did theirs on the radio on on, on Kevin's show teed up on, on TSN 1200 uh Alan, they did his appropriately at the city and district championship last week, which, you know, as you mentioned, any time winner of that. So perfect. And, and then Brad's was uh, last night as we're recording this mm-hmm. on the Thursday at read of you, uh, lots of friends and family there to support it. We've got some pictures up on our Instagram. If people want to see that there. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And then Susan Pearl, who by odd sake, I actually ran into her last week. She was yeah. actually at Smugglers yes, down to play it yeah. for the first time. So uh, it was good to see her down there. And then, you know, she'll have an opportunity to, you know, the focus to be on her as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and uh, you know, that's going to be a good ceremony. And that will take place at, at Rideau View as well. So, it, yeah, yeah, like you said, um, for the Hall of Fame ceremonies. And, you know, Joe McLean, who obviously worked for, with us for a long time, uh, he's involved with that and helping Drew Lefebvre out uh, and doing those things. Uh, and, you know, they've made for, for great ceremonies. And, you know, I heard it was a fairly quick ceremony last night, but, you know, well attended. And uh, everybody seemed to enjoy it. And a good send-off for, for Brad as he's playing this week in the PJ Tour Canada event. Only his fifth PJ Tour Canada event, by the way, because, you know, he played the old Canadian Tour, but the modern tour under the PGA tour Canada. This is only his fifth one there and he doesn't play a lot. So, no. uh, but, but uh, should be a fun week for him. Cool. Um, yep. Now this is an interesting story, Scott. Mm. Um, this is a very interesting story because this is, uh, this is dominance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and crazy, this is dom- eh? This is not dominance at the club level or the, or the local, this is dominance at the, at the highest levels of, of, uh, of golf. Um, tell us a little bit about um, about um, this young lady. Yeah, Anne Sophie uh, Bourgo. I, I think that's the pronunciation for her name. Um, so a lot of people might not be familiar with her. Um, she lived uh, in the Trombolon area, but uh, they live in um, Florida in the wintertime. But uh, Anne Sophie is a member at Royal Ottawa. Uh, just started doing some extra work with a friend of ours as well. So, um, and this girl uh, basically destroyed the Quebec Provincials this week. So they have the uh, uh, running concurrently. They have the Quebec Women's Amateur, the Quebec Women's Junior, and the Juvenile Championship. Well, guess what? She's 16, so she's eligible for all three. And she dominated it this week. It was at Lac St. Joseph, uh, just 16, graduates high school in 2026, uh, final round 67, shot six under for the 54 holes. And believe me, it was not easy conditions up there. Uh, Tristan Mullally, who's the national ID coach for uh, for Golf Canada, was up there and just said it was an amazing performance. Um, She won the amateur by 13 strokes, beating a, a number of uh, NCAA college players in the process and for the junior and juvenile to- uh, titles she won by 18 Dude, <laughs> so please. I mean that's that's crazy so I mean just just cruise to a victory and you know I think we're going to see obviously a lot from her um, she's already a winner and in, in you know she won a lot of events in the states uh, Florida State Golf Association had some success in AJGA events uh, and just, you know, just going to continue to do that as well. I would, I would expect. And uh, for a young girl at this age, obviously she's now on the golf Canada radar, a number of the things. And, and certainly uh, her name is going to be coming across our lips and the lips of many more people uh, for a lot more 
uh, in the next little while for sure. Now, before we start tagging her as the next Brooke Henderson, let's just oh no you know, no we're, let, no, we're, let's yeah, let's yeah, just yeah. let her yeah. let her develop oh, let her do sure. her thing. Let's not yeah. put a whole lot of pressure on her um, and uh, and see where this goes. But certainly, when mm -hmm. you can Definitely. put up that kind of performance, um, you know the the radar specifically yeah. maybe of NCAA schools and stuff like that is going to be. Uh, there's going to be a lot of schools taking a look at her, I would imagine. Yeah, if, if that's her intention. Some. Yeah, we got a lot of kids that obviously, uh, you know, she early on in her career, she mentioned wanting to go to the University of Florida. Um, whether kids end up doing that or not, who knows these these days. And, you know, some younger ones definitely turn pro and, and so forth. Uh, we will say, and, and temper it, and this is not to take it away from her, um, traditionally the fields have not been very big for the, the Quebec women's amateur and junior and juvenile the last number of years. I would say it was a little bit bigger this year which was nice to see um but you know the fact that she won it by that much and you know there were a lot of other talented yeah. players that she obviously separated herself by clearly shows that you know this obviously was not a fluke and you know she's a solid solid player i haven't yet to see her play in person but um you know a couple of people that i highly respect have obviously seen you know her action her game uh, and and believe you know she's kind of the real deal is very authentic player so yeah like you said we're going to let it breathe, see where it goes, but certainly be paying attention every time she tees it up. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, two other really quick things, and then uh, and then we're going to have to take a quick break. Uh, yeah, but uh, the PGA Tour Canada obviously is back in Ottawa this mm -hmm. week as we're recording this podcast. Uh, round one is underway. And yep. um, they've got four days of uh, of golf to play at Eagle Creek uh, Golf Club mm -hmm. in uh, in Dunrobin, Ontario, a Club Lincoln owned facility. Um, and you know we'll uh, uh, keep your eyes open on flagstick.com over the next uh, few days and into next week for some results and information as yep. that tournament starts to unfold. Um, you're going to be in attendance, I think, on Sunday just to yep. see it all unfold and wrap up. Yep. And um, you know, again, un unfortunately. You know, there's only one of us. There's two of us here, but yeah. I say, there's only one of us uh, that's, that's, you know, to get out there and cover it every day is a little, yeah. a little bit of a stretch considering no, everything else is going on. And yeah, there's always lots of other stories going on. I, I would say the biggest story for people to pay attention to this week is, is Davis lamb. Who's an American who's won the last two events on the tour. Uh, he's in contention already on day one. And if he should win this week, he gets an automatic uh, move up to the corn Ferry tour. So that's kind of the big storyline of the week for sure. On top of obviously some local participation and some regional players as well. And the reshuffle happens after this week. So that mm -hmm. determines kind of what happens for status wise for, for players, uh, ones that maybe had conditional status can kind of move their way up, earn their way for some more spots for the end of the year. And uh, so hopefully that, that works out for a few players that are grinding away. And as we mentioned, the OVJ intersectionals are kind of underway. We're into the um, uh, just finished up with the um, OVJ women's division yeah. uh, of the intersectionals. And uh, we won't get into all the details because there's no, too many divisions, all, but, yeah. but Ottawa hunt club uh, uh, ladies uh, are victorious in what we class the a division, which is the top Correct. division to yep. ladder your way into over the mm -hmm. overtime. Uh, they're the champs. So they get to host next year. And yep. um, that should be exciting, uh, particularly yeah, exciting for the three teams that uh, to play against them because yeah. you get to play the Hunt Club. Yeah. That never so, sucks. Yeah, congratulations to them. And we have all the results yeah. uh, up at plastic.com. So, I mean, every single division, all the points. And, you know, of note, Sherry Thompson mentioned me from the OBJ. Laramack women uh, participated this year for the first time. They were able to take every single point in the uh, first division that they obviously went into. So I would expect them to start moving their way up. Yeah, uh, that's a little ladder some, climb. <laughs> yeah, and probably some inspiration as well for some clubs that maybe don't participate. The fact that they can get in there and start working their way up yeah, so uh, absolutely but, intersections uh, are awesome yeah good Love to see and and uh every uh, i'll tell you this you know obviously montreal district does them in in uh in quebec um but certainly there's a lot of people around the country that are jealous of this interclub competition and, and how it takes place and obviously it's history and uh it's traditions so. exactly exactly all right last thing uh with the flagstick open in the books with the flagstick shootout in the books uh, we now turn our attention to the Flagstick Two-Ball Championship, which we launched last year. 
Uh, again, an event launched with a slightly smaller uh, group. I think we had uh, 30 teams, 25 teams, something like that. Yeah, um, a little more than that, I think. Yeah. 32, 32 um, teams. Something like that. Great, yeah. great start. Uh, yep. playing for the Stanley Thompson Trophy at the Brockville Country Club. Yep. That event is happening September 9th and 10th back at Brockville Country Club again, mm-hmm. um, which is which is the host club for it. Um, and our defending champions, uh, Phil Patterson and Adam Volko, are committed and registered and ready to go. <laughs> ready to so, take on all takers. So if all, you think you got what it takes to take these guys down, yep. then you need to get to flagstick.com uh, and, uh, and register – for mm-hmm. the uh, two ball championship uh it's not that we take a minimum it's not a minimum field so per se but because of the time of year tea times are a little uh, uh tighter yeah, uh, yeah. to make sure that we have lots of room for dark and stuff like that so yep. uh, we're taking a maximum of 100 players so 50 teams that's the yep. maximum that we can do uh, and we've already started seeing registrations coming in so don't wait on this one no. people i know people like to wait to the last minute and see what their schedule's like and when it just register. Yeah. If for some reason a couple of weeks out you can't play and you have to withdraw, I'm going to give you your money back. Yeah. If for some reason you find out the day before that you can't play, I'm not going to give you your money back. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, unless I, you can I, find I, someone to take your place. Yeah. So you got time yeah. after the fact if you can't play, but don't don't not be able to get into it by not registering. So yeah. register. Because it's yeah, a for sure. Event. I I literally talked to three different uh, people yesterday who are already putting together their pairings. That ones that didn't play in it before, yeah. just because they've heard about it, they've they've seen how the other tournaments run, and you know they're actively getting their partners. And they like the fact the one guy's like, okay, you know we're a couple of B players, so we can play together. The other yeah. guy's like, I'm an A, but my buddy likes to play tournaments. He's a C, and again, I was actually with a guy from Toronto who you know grew up in in the kind of the kingston area and he's already recruiting a buddy to come down and and, and play that weekend so it's yeah, a great concept we we weren't sure in year one how it was going to go with splitting the flights up because it is there are three flights uh three yeah. divisions to it and it's all split up on the basis of a combined uh handicap and, yeah but that's where the handicap part ends it's like mm-hmm. the flag stick open except this one is a little bit different in that no matter what division you're in, because the way we set Brockville Country Club is a very unique golf course that allows you, it's not an overly powerful length golf course. No. So it allows us to set the course up for everyone. Same for every division. There's only yeah. one set of tees. Yeah. Everybody from every division plays at the same tees, which means everybody from every division, every team is eligible to win the overall title regardless of the flight that you're in. So there's a flight champion and then there's the overall champion. So, um, and it's a two person, not a best ball. It's a two person stable, stable for combined, combined stable. stable for events. So you're playing yeah. your own ball, right? But the worst you can do on any hole is a double, right? Exactly. And the worst you can do is lose one point for anything, a double or higher. So yeah. you're gaining points for every par you make and every birdie you're gaining three and every Eagle you're gaining seven. And you're only losing points if you make a double or worse a bogey is zero points so you don't lose anything it's a great the way we've got it going it's a great event for yeah. any level of player pick a partner yeah. let's go yeah for sure <laughs> let's go yeah um okay so do that we've got to take a break uh yes, when we do. come back we are going to head to the lesson t uh with uh, kevin and jay came see what the see what the father-son duo got for us this week on the podcast and we're going to start talking about uh, the Open Championship uh, and a um, few little tidbits here and there. It's a major week, so we like to talk about that kind of stuff. But uh, we'll do that as soon as we get back from this uh, this little word from our new sponsor. Adidas introduces the Ultimate 365 Tour Heat Apparel and ZG23 Event Footwear to help golfers handle the heat this season. Both the ZG23 Event and Ultimate 365 Tour Apparel are available now on adidas.ca, the Adidas app, and selected retailers worldwide. Welcome back to the Flagstick Podcast. This is Jeff Botter, and uh, the guy to my side here, right or left, is Scott McLeod. And um, we're going to jump out uh, to the Lesson T, which is brought to you, of course, by the Kevin Hame Golf School. It's always the right time to play better golf, whether you need private lessons, a better short game, or some putting help, or maybe even a custom club fitting. Uh, visit kevinhame.com and remember that better golf is a lot more fun. It is indeed. Uh, so let's head out to the Lesson T and see what uh, Kevin and Jake Hame have in store for us and you 
this week. All right, Jay Kane. We've got long irons in our hands today. I got a four iron. What do you have, a three or a four? Same dreaded four iron. Yeah, tough. Uh, you need to really be careful with your long clubs. I think most of us try to hit the golf ball too hard with the long clubs, and we get out of what we would call tempo, rhythm, that sort of thing, right? Yeah, I think the thing for people to remember is the club is designed to help you hit the ball further. So I think there's this, you know, intrinsic illusion. I have to hit the ball harder to make it do what I want it to do. Totally. But it actually makes you hit it worse most of the time. Yeah, I do that. And, uh, you know, I think people also misunderstand speed and rhythm and tempo. I mean, we're mostly talking about tempo today to hit your longer clubs, which is the pacing of the swing. I think rhythm just adds a sense of flow to it, and especially in the change of direction, super important. Yeah, I think that's how we define the two a little differently, right? Rhythm is the the feel and transition of the golf swing, where tempo is the ratio of your backswing to your downswing from a time perspective. And neither are speed. We want speed. You have to apply speed in the right spots in your golf swing, but you don't want to swing slow. Slow doesn't equal great rhythm or tempo. Anyway, back to our four iron. So, so we don't rush the transition and so we don't get out in front of the shot. We need a certain tempo or pacing to the swing. And we've tested a lot of PGA Tour pros and everyone else, and it seems like a three to one is really great. So three parts back, one part into the golf ball. Yeah, so what that would look like in practice is essentially when I make a golf swing, I would have a bit of a one, two, three, one rhythm. So it's one, two, three hit. And by doing that properly, I can control my rhythm, I can control my tempo, and allow the club to help me develop speed, so I'll hit my long iron. Yeah, I love better. that. Let the club do what it wants to do. Here's a little demo for you to show you, though. I don't like when people go back too slowly or try to stop at the top. If I was going to jump, Jake, if I go super slow down and then try to jump, it's very awkward and I don't use any rhythm or pacing. Likewise, if I go very quickly and up, that's a little jerky. So if you watch that motion, you'll almost see a one, two, three jump. And that's what we're looking for in golf. One, two, three, one. Let's see it, big man. Okay. So just as a practice. You can even say it while you're hitting the shot. Go ahead. And... Totally. So as a practice, I'm going to go one, two, three, one. One, two, three, one. And I'm going to mirror that when I hit the golf ball. One, two, three, one. Yeah, perfect. I love what you said there, Jake. You know, you need the proper tempo, the proper rhythm. Let the club do what it's supposed to do. Pace it out, practice with rhythm, and you'll hit better golf shots. All right. Well, as always, um, you learn something every week on this podcast and learning something on the lesson tee uh, certainly doesn't suck. <laughs> and, and as always, that's uh, some pretty good uh, advice and pretty good tip from, uh, from Kevin and Jake. And we appreciate everything that they provide for us here on the podcast every, uh, every week throughout the season. And we look forward to seeing what they got going on next week. And if you want, you can obviously check out all of uh, Kevin and Jake's, uh, great instruction at kevinheem.com on his YouTube channel, or you can jump on over to flagstick.com where we have a special little drop down menu specific for Kevin Heem Golf School instruction. You can check out you a lot of the tips right there, too. So, all right, Scotty Mac, let's jump into the back nine. The back nine presented by Castleview Golf Club, only a short 25 minute drive from Ottawa. This 18 hole layout is renowned for its superb conditions and unsurpassed services, making it a must play in the capital region. 5, 10, and 20 round packages are available. Visit castleview.com for more information. Well, as the back nine begins, the front nine has already begun. You got it. On another major championship on the PGA Tour, this time the last one of the uh, 2023 calendar year, the Open Championship. And mm -hmm. uh, I got to say... The open chair. This is my this is my favorite. I love the Masters Ditto. because it's Augusta, but it's it you know, yeah. It's because it's because it's Augusta that I love it so much. Yeah, it's also because it's the start of the year. Exactly, the, it gets the, the mojo going. Things. It's like yeah, the flag exactly. stick open, you know, it gets yeah. the mojo going. Yeah, They're yeah very yeah. similar. But, Augusta, the Masters, and the flag stick. But the open. open. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, before you get into it too much, the level of excitement for this for the open. 
I don't know if anybody saw my Twitter Twitter on <laughs> Wednesday, but I, I woke up at 4 a.m., scanned the channels, realized, why is the open not on? Was then I realized Wednesday? it was Wednesday. So <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that's what happens when the days are blurring together and you don't really know whether it's monday tuesday or uh, wednesday exactly see the co- probably... those watching on youtube see the coffee that's the I, only way we uh, can survive i was so off this week it was unbelievable as far as the day whether it was wednesday or thursday i was talking to a couple of pg tour canada guys and it was oh have have fun have a good first round tomorrow they're like yeah we're playing the pro-am <laughs> so it's like <laughs> it's like oh yeah <laughs> oh my gosh yeah <laughs> oh my gosh there's nothing there's nothing better though i mean you know the open championship it, it's what's great about the open championship there are so many great things but what i love oh, yeah, about it definitely. first of all i can get up in the morning mm-hmm. have my coffee yeah and sit and watch major championship golf all morning yeah and then start my work day after lunch yeah <laughs> It's yeah. the greatest thing. You yeah, don't sure. any other major championship or any of the golf tournament you're watching, unless it's the West Coast ones are, are even worse because right. you're, you're up late, late at night. But, night. The, but the normal the the normal ones, you know, they're starting their coverage sometime in the morning. Yeah, you know, early, you know, or late morning, and yeah. then the coverage is running until five or six o'clock at night. Well, if I'm going to watch it, I just blow. I'm going to blow four full days watching yeah. golf. Yeah, the Open yeah, Championship. Yeah, I still got lots of time, even on Sunday when it's all said and done, to get some stuff done. Yeah, go play golf myself. And you know what? The other thing is neat about the Open and and the coverage as well is, um, if people are not aware of it, the Open does a great job with their radio coverage, which mm-hmm. is available through the internet. So you know, if you're driving someplace or whatever, and you just want to flip it on, uh, you can you can listen to it. And I've done that. It seems always to coincide with you know maybe a trip someplace or whatever. Yep. You know you you can follow it on there. Uh, if you're too groggy to get out of bed and turn it on the TV, Just listen to it. Put an earbud in your ear and you can drift in and out and, and catch pieces of it or whatever. But they do a great job uh, with the radio coverage as as well, and you know obviously describing kind of what's going on. It just has a different feel yeah. than than every other major championship. So and and the locations, the host courses, oh, course. uh, the yeah. rotation that they're on, it's yeah. it's like just unsurpassed. I mean the the history yeah. of the courses that they're playing. Um, you know this one. Obviously, this is the last uh, uh, Hoy Lake um, at mm-hmm. uh, Royal Liverpool in England. This is where Rory won his last major championship, yeah. I, I believe, right? Like crazy? This is nine, nine years now? Yeah, 2014. That's, yeah. you know, not that that's surprising. You know, I, I realize that when it comes to major championships and top-level golfers, there's sort of this... You know, they come out of the gate when they're young. They win two or three early on in their career, and everybody's talking about how many majors are they going to win. Spieth. And that's sort of the (laughs) – all of them. Yeah, Yeah. yeah, Spieth. They just Uh, go on runs, right? You know, Yeah, like Kepka. Even Kepka probably in his mind believed that uh, based on how he played in those – when he won his first bunch of majors, that – that this was – that the sky's the limit. I'm going to chase down Tiger. And then you realize just how hard – Mm-hmm. It was for Tiger to get 14. Yeah. 15. And how hard it would have been 15. now, uh, you know, for Jack to get 18. I will say that Jack played probably in an era where the where the depth of the field that could compete against him was not quite as deep as the fields are now, Fair. where the guy that's in 144th in the field or 150th in the field has really just as much of a chance of winning. Whereas, you know, when Jack played, the guy that was the dead last guy that got into the field probably was had to have yeah. lightning in a bottle to even come close. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, when Tiger did it, it was similar. I mean, it was a it was a top end of the field and there was a bottom end of the field, so you really only had to beat the top. But when the other guys like Kepka and mm-hmm. and Spieth, Spieth and, yeah. um, Rory. and, you know, Rory, those guys, those fields are a little yeah. bit deeper. Uh, it's yeah. a little bit harder to win 14 well, or 18 majors. Yeah, well, there's only four, you know, uh, there's only four men's majors a year. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, you have limited options, um, you know, as far as, you know, peaking at a particular time, there's a lot of circumstances have to happen. Uh, you got to get the right side of the draw. 
Um, you mm-hmm. know, weather could obviously be a hindrance, yeah, especially, as as the open, factor, yeah. especially at the open. Um, so it, it's not easy. So, you know, to be critical of a player when they haven't had one, yes, we have expectations, right? You know, there's obviously been a lot of expectations of Rory, but, you know, he's been in the mix. We got to remember, you know, Jack got 18, but he, he was also, you know, second a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Tiger was second a lot of times. So for them to get their 15 and 18, they were also lost a lot of them as well. Um, and, and it just happens. And, and who knows what's going to happen with, with Rory here. I mean, he obviously he won at the Scottish Open last week. He, he might go on a run. Uh, we just yeah. we just we just don't know. And uh, but the great part, as you said, just the just the history here, uh, you know, Tiger winning it at, at Hoy Lake in, in uh, 2006. It's been hosted here 13 times. I mean, a number of those were obviously in a in a much different era very early on. Um, and it's not a golf course that I think a lot of people are, are as familiar with. Right. And I, I think part of the reason why they're not familiar with is that the condition of this golf course changes and the look of the golf course changes by a fair bit. Uh, you know, 20, uh, 06 was really baked out. Uh, 14 was kind of in between. And then this year, it's a little bit softer, even though it was baked out a few weeks ago. Um, and maybe it doesn't have the, you know, iconic holes that people are used to. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, it's a, it's a challenging golf course and one that, uh, you know, is fun to watch. And I think as we get to know it better, even though, you know, and we'll get to it, they're even changing the layout a little bit. Um, yeah. it, it, it's still, um, you know, a lot of people are talking about the internal out of bounds on a couple of holes. Um, but this is a golf course where you really got to place the golf ball and, and, uh, just like any other open championship, a lot of it is going to be dictated by the weather, which is a little benign right now, but, uh, we'll see what happens in the next few days. Yeah. And that's the thing about open championships is I feel like a lot of the golf courses that they play, and I think it's indicative of any golf course. It's not just open championship courses, but these ones, particularly, if you don't get that little bit of weather, that mm. that little bit of moisture maybe that you know and i'd rather even not get the moisture that that wind yeah um, and it doesn't have to be a heavy wind no it no ju- or it just has to be enough, enough wind to dry to keep the course dry because the yeah. dryness of these courses these links courses seems to kind of add that element of toughness to it where the mm. ball runs through the fairways and into the into fescue the and it runs through greens and it rolls into these yeah. bunkers because these are how these golf courses were built you know is right. to it's yeah. all these little collection areas all over the place where mm-hmm. the ball just funnels to if yeah. it's soft and not windy just you know, becomes american golf where just can, it's target right yeah it's it's target just, golf so that that kind of bothers me a little bit but yeah at the end of the day it's an open championship and um, I'm going to watch it and I'm going to yeah, enjoy I th- it either I think, way. I think the great part about the open championship is just how it examines the player's skills in a different way. Right. I mean, yeah. we get the same type of skills that they have to have on a lot of the other traditional golf courses that they would play on the, you know, European tour or the PGA tour, uh, you know, week to week. Um, and this has a different test to it from a strategy wise, uh, flighting of shots, um, the ability to be a little bit more strategic off the tee and understand that it's always not about just bashing driver. Um, so again, it really explores the skills that the player has. And if they have a greater level of skills, if they have more tools in their bag, they can tend to excel a little bit more. Uh, and But to then to do it over four rounds is even more difficult because, yeah. you know, uh, like, any, like any major, we're going to see a lot of guys in there on the leaderboard right away. That we're yep. going to go, oh, wow, you know, but, you know, they're not going to be there come come Sunday. They might not even be there come Saturday. They might not even make the cut, even though they yeah, shoot a good round uh, on Thursday once they, they get the weather the other way. So Exactly, um, exactly. Yeah, but well attended already, you know, 50,000 plus uh, the first day. They're expecting 260,000 this week. Uh, they brought the camping area back. I don't know if you paid attention yeah, to that, but yeah, last yeah. year they had the camping, uh, the campground, which is amazing. I'd love to do that. That would be amazing just yes, to go and be. camp out. And uh, so they brought that back uh, this year. And yeah, 260000 for a week. What a vibe. Really, what that's a vibe. In- that's incredible. Yeah. That is just absolutely incredible. You know, um, uh, some changes they made to the golf course too mm. uh, for this. Uh, the one that they, uh, the one that's sort of widely talked about is uh, is the new 17th uh, hole, Little Eye. Yeah. Um, under 140 yards. Yeah. Um, 
very much postage stamp kind of deal here. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, small, small um, putting green. Good luck. Yeah. You know, everybody will hit the green in regulation. It's a question of how many will stay on it. Yeah, exactly. I always, I always joke around. I tell a story about how when you and I played Pinehurst number two. Oh yeah, and I hit something like fifteen or sixteen greens in regulation and stayed on two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I hit yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, and I mean that's uh, you know again. Mackenzie Niebert did the the redesign, helped them out with this. Um, already, some players have already dis you know they voiced their displeasure with playing it, just because again, you know, it's a test. Um, you know, bunkers are are pretty rough around it. Uh, seen some play already where you know practice rounds and and early on where players kind of work their way across back and forth. Um, a couple of guys said, Hey, there could be a one on here. It could be an eight. Um, it's, it's going to have a critical role, especially where it is uh, in, in the, uh, the layout of the golf course. But, you know, I, I would look at it as the equivalent of, you know, like 17 at TPC Sawgrass, mm -hmm. where it can be a little bit of a nightmare and it's really squeezing the player to be really perfect when they need to late in the round. So, you know, I'm not opposed against it. I, I think it's going to probably cause a little bit extra carnage, which maybe, uh, you know, some some spectators would like to see. I mean, uh, they don't mind seeing a record two at a NASCAR race. And and this is going to be a, a record two here. Um, yeah, but yeah, cool. it'll, be, it'll be fun to follow all week um, and see how it plays out and see how it impacts what happens in the end. Not sure I'm a big fan of the internal out of bounds, but I mean, at the same time, I don't really know the course layout well enough to understand yeah. why there would be internal out of bounds. Obviously, there's a reason for it. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure it's not just to penalize players from hitting it, you know, offline on those holes. There's no, you know, uh, but there's safety, I, there's safety issues and other things that are involved there. But, uh, you know, it, it happens. I mean, they, they have it at Port Rush as well. You know, down the left side at Port Rush is is out of bounds there, and it pushes players to go to the right. Um, you know, for the holes where it comes into play on three and eighteen, it just means there's a little bit more strategy involved. You know, how aggressive is a player going to be? Are they going to play across the corner where the out of bounds comes into play? Are they going to obviously take an iron? It's just it's just another hazard more than anything. Mm -hmm. exactly. um, and you know, it's another factor that a player has to you know bring into their plan to play around the golf course. So um yeah and it doesn't need to be a pond or anything it just yeah it's just it is what it is um and you know the players will have to deal with it so you know uh, you're gonna see media and you're gonna see social media bitching about it you're not gonna see players bitching about it that much so here's a good question then sure so here we go we got you know we're off to the races here i'm looking at the leaderboard i'm seeing some yeah. some you know some names yeah um can cam smith defend his title at this Ooh. Uh, at this championship like it, it, how i mean obviously it's hard to defend any golf mm -hmm. tournament let alone yeah. a major championship um it's hard to defend an open championship yeah i mean realistically i mean i almost don't like the word defending more than anything because i mean it's not like you you're guaranteed it you have to go out and win it again but you know he's got the requisite skills to be able to do especially short game I, I think that's the underrated part for for cam smith you know for some people but if you look at his ability to get the ball around the hole uh, to putt he's a, an exemplary putter uh his chipping and pitching i mean him off of tight lies i mean if you're going to pick some player to have to hit it off a tight lie um the only disadvantage this week would be the condition. If the course was a little crispier and a little bit firmer, then he might have an advantage there. But because it's a little bit softer and even with a tighter lie, it's going to make it easier for some of the other players to, to be able to control their strike and to control their chips and pitches. So um, he probably wishes, you know, it was firmer than it is. Yeah. Um, but I can certainly say he could be in the mix. I, I he's back a ways yet. right now. He's like plus it, one. He's yeah. finished at plus one, and the leaders finished at six at five under. So, yeah, uh, not it, you're not out of it at this point. But no, if you're you know four or five back of the lead after day one. Yeah, it just means the number that you have to put up on day two has got to be pretty significant. Yeah, I just think the issue we right now is you know again we've got perfect weather uh, day one. Uh, yeah. Supposed to be some moist here for the next three days. Uh, winds are not scheduled to go. Uh, 
up by a lot, but you never know they could. So I think it's a pretty inert day. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't judge much by the leaderboard, except for the fact, you know, it's an opportunity for players to, you know, get some strokes in hand. Um, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Like it's yeah. uh, because yeah. of those conditions and how, and the players that are ahead of him right now or ahead mm -hmm. of anybody right now, it's just yeah. like even Kepka's one under, which is only, right. you know, four back. Right. It's not a big deal, but you know, definitely this is a chance to gain. I love today. the fact that I see Tommy Fleetwood up there. I mean, I, uh, I want this guy to win. This is, yeah. I want, if he won this one. Oh yeah. Whew, I mean, that'd be it, like, that'd be like Rory winning the, uh, winning it at, at, uh, in Northern Ireland. Like, yeah, just... totally. I mean, obviously Fleetwood has played well this year. Um, you know, lost his playoff in the, in the Canadian open, you know, this is obviously in England. Um, it would be a huge win. And, yeah. and I think, you know, based on his ball striking ability, I think this, this golf course really suits the player that can really control their golf ball. Not that any golf course is not like that, but, um, there are golf courses where players can get away with not being great for ball striking yeah. and, and still score and, and still win a tournament. Um, but this one, especially when there's a number of demanding tee shots that require long irons off the tee and so forth. Uh, th and that's exactly why I think we're seeing him in Excel up there. And, and this is important to him. And yeah, if you do look up that leaderboard, you know, there's a lot of unknown players that are there that I yeah. do not think will be there after three days, um, you know, after four days for sure. Whereas Fleetwood, I think, could definitely uh, be contending all the way through. And he'll be a guy we'll be talking about all week, maybe. So what do you think of Rory's chances? I mean, anybody has any chance, but just like, do you like yeah. Rory in this at, at Hoy Lake? Do you like who do you like? Yeah, no, Rory, Rory's definitely one to like for a number of reasons. I mean, you cannot, um, you cannot f basically, you know, diminish the experience of winning at a venue, mm -hmm. knowing that you've got a quality strategy that has worked before. Uh, it has a certain amount of confidence that goes with it. Um, the fact that he won the Scottish Open at Renaissance, which is a totally different golf course, and and but does require some of the same skills. Um and you know what? He's played well in, in the U S open this week or this year, for an example. So he's trending nicely. Um, is he going to be in the mix? Yeah, I think he's going to be in the mix. Um, you know, from a skill set standpoint, I think this golf course might take away his ability to just bash driver mm -hmm. all over the place. But the fact that he can grab a two iron and hit that two seventy and, um, you know, obviously is, is something that some other players can't do. Yeah. Um, so he is definitely one of the favorites and he should be one of the favorites, um, just because of that ability to get the golf ball come off the, off the tee and, and also control it going into the greens plus his trajectory. You know, if the winds don't go up by a lot and he can rely on his higher trajectory, mm -hmm. you know, greens become more accessible for him. He's able to stop it on the green. Yeah. You know, if a player is flighting it low and, you know, they play 17, for an example, you know, there's a high chance they can skip that across the green. Whereas if the greens start to get a little bit firmer, um, they're going to need that higher trajectory. And, and very few players on the tour hit it higher than Rory McIlroy. What about yourself? Yeah. Who do you who do you like? Who are you favoring? Who you, who you, you looking know, at? I keep every time there's a major, we go through this where we talk about who who do you like? Who do you think? Mm. I got no clue. Man, well, I, you I, know what? I, I I like Rory. Probably the safe I, answer. <laughs> I like Rory. The only thing is, I don't like I don't like the chances of a guy winning two weeks in a row. At, you know, I mean, it's not that it's not it's not possible. It's very possible to do. It's, but in this day and age, um, with the level of players that are that are out there, then it mm -hmm. just I just don't know if winning last week and then winning again this week under on similar type golf courses, obviously, but I yeah. just don't know if, I don't know if I like the idea of that happening. I don't yeah. know how many times it's actually been done where somebody has won the week before a major, let alone yeah. when the last time someone won back-to-back -back tournaments on the PGA tour. Yeah. Um, like, I, I don't mean, I, I'm not a statistical guy. So, I mean, I'm, yeah. but I'm pretty sure that hasn't happened in a while. Uh, so I, I just, I don't know. I, I like Fleetwood mm -hmm. because I feel like he's playing well right now and he's due. And mm. given where it is, it's just a question of does the pressure, if he's there come Saturday or Sunday, does the pressure of winning in England 
get to him. Um, whereas he didn't lose, he didn't lose the Canadian Open, the RBC Canadian Open, because he didn't play well. No, Nick Taylor he won that. He lost yeah. because someone it's bombed like a putt on the putt. playoff hole and yeah. beat him. So yeah. he didn't really lose it. He got beat. Yeah. I'm just worried that if he does put himself in a position to win the Open Championship in England, that it might be a little too much for him. But, you know, these guys are professionals. have been doing yeah, this for so long. I, that I shouldn't think he, really be an issue. Yeah, I, th- I think he's proven himself for sure. Um, you know, just trying to look through the list and look at players. I mean, I don't think you can dismiss uh, Shoffley or Scheffler. Um, but no. Shoffley, Shoffley for sure. Um, he's got that quiet demeanor. He's got that, you know, kind of no pressure. He's obviously won some stuff. Is yeah, John but... Rom too? I mean, yeah. You know what though? I mean, I don't know about Rom. Um, it's cooled you know, off a lot. He's cooled off, but I, I, I have some concerns about him at an Open Championship. Um, he didn't play last week at the Scottish. Um, he just recently missed the cut at the Travelers. Um, he's been okay in a couple of, of majors, but I mean, the guy should have destroyed St. Andrews last year and tied for 34th. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know because the high frustration level that can happen at an open championship. He's very too know, emotional. I just don't know if he can keep himself together. So, I mean, just think about that. If all of a sudden, you know, he hits a shot that's off by just a fraction on 17 and it rolls off into the bunker and he walks away with, you know, a bogey or a double or something like that. Uh, again, you know, he's obviously proven he can win and, and, and keep himself together a little bit, but it's still going to affect him kind of emotionally. So mm-hmm. um, I, I think because things get so, you know, uh, dicey sometimes around yeah. some of the open, open tracks, I, I, I don't, I don't know if he's the, always the best fit despite the fact that he you know he's obviously got tremendous tremendous skills so yeah where where's he at was he a later tea time uh i'm not sure on that one i hadn't checked his tea time but you know but again that's that's partly why we look at a guy like hatton you know even though he's one of the favorites i just don't know if he can emotionally keep himself together yeah he's another uh, one that's a that's uh yeah uh rom's uh through two is even right now yeah uh, as is hatton yeah as is mickelson yeah what about the canadians still early, what early you, on. and there's only two canadians in the field this week it's nick taylor uh, and Corey Connors. Nick taylor Corey Connors, yeah um taylor's one over i think and finished yeah Corey's even i think early on but just just uh through i think 10 or so but yeah. um i like his ball striking ability um i think because the open championship has greens that are generally a little bit slower and yeah. potting tends to be his bugaboo a little bit. I think that's helpful to him. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see some things running out. So, um, you know, no disrespect to Nick, but I like Corey's chances better. And I also like Corey as a, as somebody who could really contend here. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, I have no, I have no qualms about, you know, would be betting on Corey, especially over the next few days, you know, if some wind came up or, you know, the ball striking again, he's a guy I think that would separate himself better if the golf course was playing firmer and harder. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I agree I, with that. I just think there's more players that are kind of in the mix just because of the way the golf course is, and it'll be harder to separate yourself. So what about okay. Ricky? What about Ricky? Last one. Well, I mean, definitely. I mean, just one okay. of Detroit. He's uh his game is on point right now. He's yep. been playing very well. Yeah. Um he's won he's, a Scottish Open before. Yeah, so he's he's familiar. He's been over there, you know, in the past. Um mm-hmm. he's been in contention in the past and yep. great ball striker. Um I I I would say if there was a dark horse that of a dark horse of favorites, I'd say yep. Ricky is sort of my dark horse of favorites. Um mm. as yeah, opposed to enough. just being a pure dark horse who's this guy. Yeah. I think he'd be the one of the favorites. He'd be the one to be like, okay, well, I didn't see that coming. Right. Um, but I understand why if he did win, I'd understand why he why he'd win. Um yeah. I I like and I just generally speaking, right now, I just like Ricky Fowler. Oh, every I think everybody just, likes Ricky. He's the I people's champ right now. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. Know, he's got the belt. Well, the U.S. Open champion got off to a nice early start as well. Three under Wyndham Clark. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy's on a bit of a heater. Yeah. All the other players have said, you know, this guy's going to have some, you know, success. Um, you know, he, he's already got a couple wins this season. Um, yeah. I mean, here here you go. This guy could add a second major and, and really legitimize, you know, kind of where he's at in the game. Yeah. Um, yeah. It'll be fun. You know what? Here's the thing. When it comes down to it, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you can have favorites and, and look at certain players and hope how they contend, but the open always gives us a good story. It certainly you know, does. It's very rare. I mean, you're going to get your Todd Hamilton's over the years and your, your few different things or ben whatever, Curtis. <laughs> uh, but you know, things uh, overall, even when those events happen, you're still going to have something that's very satisfying. I think mm -hmm. to watch more than anything. Um, and you know early in the morning with a cup of coffee in your hand and and uh it, it'll be fun it'll be fun overall and and uh, you know like you said favorite major favorite men's major yeah uh last men's major of the year obviously the women have a few uh left here um but yeah uh going to be a joy to to watch and you know i'm not traveling right away so i uh, usually i'm traveling yeah. sometimes on this weekend and i don't get to see it but i'm specifically you know going to watch it and um maybe i'll have the earbud in my ear when i'm at the uh canadian tour event of the pj tour canada event on sunday Why not? um get to watch that finish in the morning and then watch the finish um in ottawa after that sounds good all right let's put a wrap on that yes sir Open championship talk a wrap on another episode of uh of the flagstick podcast uh scotty max going to be away for a couple of weeks uh, so who knows? Maybe we'll have a uh, yeah. a guest host with me for one of the weeks. <laughs> going to we'll leave it. We'll friend. leave it as a surprise. Yeah. We're not going to say anything. It, it might happen. It might not. But we'll see. Yeah, um, going to visit with our friends at Golf PEI actually. Yes, exactly. Uh, which is good. They're actually uh, Sam McPhail and, and Ben King are going to be doing a little golf marathon this Tuesday coming up. They're going to do I think six golf courses, nine holes each, mm -hmm. um, just an all day content marathon. And I was talking to Sam quickly last night and I'm going to try to join them uh, for the last nine. I'm not necessarily going to be playing. Who knows? Might be caddying, might be just along, uh, but those guys are going to be whipped by the time they get there. But Absolutely. Uh, obviously it'd be fun to visit our, with our friends from, uh, from golf. PEI. Sounds good. All right. Uh, you take care of yourself, Scotty Mac. Um, we will, we will talk in a couple of weeks on the, on the cast, but we'll talk before then. Um, okay. obviously thank you to all our, to our sponsors this week. Uh, again, Metcalf golf club, Castleview golf club, uh, and our presenting sponsor. Oh, sorry. And Kevin Haim golf school. Yes, Don't want to forget the Kevin Haim golf school and our presenting sponsor this week, Adidas introducing, uh, the ultimate 365 tour heat apparel and the, uh, ZG 23 vent footwear to help golfers handle the heat this season. The collection features a mix of silhouettes for men and women made from heat ready and no show technology to keep golfers cool and dry so they can perform at their very best. Both these uh, ZG23 Vent and Ultimate 365 Tour apparel are available now on adidas.ca, the Adidas app, and selected retailers worldwide. Um, hopefully, you enjoy everything that you've been hearing and listening uh, or watching on the podcast be sure to follow us across all of our social media networks uh, instagram twitter facebook and spotify and threads um and uh spotify audible google Podcasts, and apple Podcasts. don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel like us click the notification bell make sure you never miss a single episode of this podcast because that would be terrible uh get over to flagstick.com where we post amazing golf content every single day uh, as always, we do appreciate you listening and tuning in to us. Uh, until next week, I'm Jeff Potter. And I'm Scott McLeod. Always remember, go for the stick.